friends welcome to my workplace at ranakhat west bengal india this is a cataract with grade 4 nuclear sclerosis the eye is dipsited let us observe this surgery this is the main incision with a 2.8 mm steel keratom at around 11 o'clock and now a side board is made on the left side of the main incision about 3 o'clock hours away at around 2 o'clock and now an air bubble is injected to fill off the anterior chamber underneath this air bubble tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule with a 27 gauge cannula. The dye is applied in such a way that it touches all parts of the anterior capsule. You see a lot of fluid, a lot of PSS stained with trypan blue is collecting in the ocular surface. This is because the eye is dipsited. To avoid this, I am going to turn the head little bit to the left side. And now, this is visco. This is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose filling off the anterior chamber. The Visco is applied over the cornea for better visibility. And now a side board is made on the right side of the main wound with the keratome because the patient has elevated nose and the eye is dipsited. And now capsulorexis. In this case I am raising a capsular tag by the needle and then using the uterita forceps in dipsited eyes we have some difficulty in doing surgery from the head end and this is the uh, left eye so I'm using the supranasal aspect for doing the surgery hydrodissection is done a bit of hydrodelineation also has been done my assistant is applying a week of cotton for draining for drainage of fluid The nuclear rotation at this stage was not good, but definitely hydrodissection has happened. So I'm going to rotate the nucleus after introducing the phaco needle. And here goes the phaco needle. Watch the exposed part of the phaco needle. It is about two or 2.25 millimeter this is because the cataract is hard and I'm going to use my technique which is called submarine job the handpiece has been turned the bevel of the phaconidal is up towards the cornea and now this is a chopper designed by me this is just like a Sinsky hook little stouter than a Sinsky hook the teeth has gone into the substance of the nucleus going through the substance of the nucleus like a submarine and now it is chopped and it is divided and this is a good crack but it's not from one end to the other end so rotate it 180 degree come to the other side and along that initial crack divide the nucleus into two heminuclei 
and this is complete separation and this is dividing on heminucleus and this is dividing other heminucleus see the tip goes through the substance of the lens matter and at one shot you can you can divide the nucleus this is a very nice technique for high volume surgeons those who want to save time and this is a very safe technique the thickness of the nucleus is about 4.5 millimeter and you are going hardly up to 3 millimeter so there is no chance that when you are traveling through the substance of the nucleus you are going to catch the posterior capsule there is no chance and now to protect the corneal endothelium I have come out and injected visco and now I want to rotate this rotate this heminucleus and place it inferiorly so that emulsification of it becomes easier yes the piece on the left side is waiting to be emulsified and at this time I go in decreasing the exposed part of the fecal needle the exposed part is about 1.5 millimeter at this time and this is the last piece at this time I have asked my assistants to reduce the vacuum to 250 flow rate is 25 and ultrasonic energy is about 60 percent and it is done and the pinucleus is being removed by the same setting 250 vacuum flow rate 25 and the posterior capsule is far behind it is not coming near the tip and in this case we see that there is hardly any cortex left inject some visco there is some cortex at around 10.30 o'clock so I go through the left side port and remove it with the Simco the side ports are about 1.6 millimeter in size or 1.7 millimeter in size and these side ports are 90 degree away from the main incision so this little larger side ports are neutralizing the astigmatism produced by the main incision to some extent And now in this case we are going to implant Hoya hydrophobic single piece monofocal intraocular lens and this is a beautiful preloaded system from Hoya Japan. The teeth goes into the anterior chamber and you don't have to enlarge the main wound, it just goes through the two point eight millimeter wound into the anterior chamber and you can very easily deliver the lens in the capsular bag so the lens has been placed in the capsular bag and now we have to remove the visco from the anterior chamber at this time I am using only irrigation I have taken some BSS in the 10 cc glass syringe and I am flushing that BSS into the anterior chamber in addition to the irrigation that is because of the uh, it is attached to the bottle at a height of about 100 centimeter so this is lot of visco has come out now this is irrigation and aspiration by bimanual irrigation aspiration cannulas this is the irrigating cannula 
and now the aspirating cannula goes in when the irrigating cannula is introduced to the main wound the anterior leaf is uh, lifted a little bit and this reduces leakage of fluid from the main wound and now we are towards the end of the surgery this is a bit of moxie we haven't used the right side port during irrigation and aspiration of the visco so I am um, hydrating only the left side port the right side port has gone a lot of rest and it doesn't need any hydration and the main wound has been constructed in such a way that it will not require any hydration this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber after a thorough lavage of the anterior chamber by the 23G Simco cannula the anterior chamber is formed very nicely and integrity of all the wounds are checked see there is no leakage from the right side port which has not been hydrated and see the main wound no leakage and the main wound has not been hydrated this is moxie and the case is concluded one more thing you have noticed in this case is that there is no wound burn the ultrasonic energy has been applied in continuous mode and 80% ultrasonic energy has been applied uh, still there is no wound burn this is the beautiful this is because of the beautiful design of the feco needle of Oakley Catrix feco machines thank you very much for your attention I have no financial interest in any of the equipments or products mentioned in this video